This past summer, I walked the Camino de Santiago from Portugal all the way to the north of Spain, which was over 200 miles on foot, and although exhausting, it was one of the greatest experiences of my life. There is so much to say about this entire experience, along with many tips and words of advice and kind of just things we've learned along the way that I want to share with you, so I decided to put everything into one video, and it is literally everything you need to know before your first Camino. From clothing to pack, random miscellaneous things to pack, how to prepare for the Camino to different routes and just random bits of advice that I wish I knew going into this and also some tips and tricks that we learned along the way that made the Camino a lot more enjoyable. Firstly, let's talk backpacks. If you've seen any of my videos before, this will look familiar. This is my favorite backpack in the entire world. I have backpacked Asia twice with it and it is fantastic. This is the backpack that I used for the Camino. It is a 40 liter Osprey Fairview backpack and it is just wonderful. There are a few different routes you can take for the Camino de Santiago, and one of the most popular ones is going from France to Spain, which can take anywhere between 30 and 50 days, which is quite a long time. I would love to eventually do that one, but this year I decided to start with one that's just a little bit shorter. We started in Porto, Portugal, and walked all the way to Santiago, which was about 200 miles, a little more than that, over the course of two weeks. So for two weeks, this backpack was perfect to carry all of my stuff. I think if you're doing a longer Camino, 30 to 50 days, you're gonna want a bigger one. But again, remember everything you pack, you have to carry. This backpack is a clamshell opening, which I prefer. I think it's just a lot easier to access all of your stuff. So starting with clothes, I will list everything that I brought. You can obviously tweak this to whatever you want to bring. But these are the things that I brought and it was like the perfect amount of clothes. I brought two t-shirts and then I brought these two Columbia shirts. They are UV reflective shirts. If they get wet, they can dry super easily and they were amazing to keep the sun off of me while I was walking. If you're not protected, your shoulders they will probably burn in the sun and it's nice to just have your shoulders covered either with one of these if you're wearing a tank top or a t-shirt because the backpack on your back for that many hours a day is gonna chafe. So make sure you protect your shoulders. Then I brought five tank tops, four sports bras, seven pairs of underwear, and three merino wool socks. There's something about merino wool that doesn't hold the smell like normal material does, and they also are just very, very comfortable to wear, and because they're a little bit thicker than a normal sock, they're gonna help prevent blisters and all of that fun stuff. I brought one kind of fake down jacket. I've talked about this before in other videos. I think it was $20 on Amazon. I'll link that down below as well. It is amazing. I brought it with me through Asia on two different backpacking trips. Depending on what time of year you go, weather is going to vary, of course, but we did the Camino in the beginning of May, and so it was a little chilly at night, and it was really nice to have a jacket to wear, and some of the days it was actually pretty cold on the actual Camino, so it was really nice to have that. For pants, I brought two pairs of Nike shorts and one zip-off hiking pants. These zip-off hiking pants absolutely saved me so many times because it's nice to wear long pants because it keeps the sun off of you, but if it gets too hot, you can just zip off the bottom part and they become shorts. Then I brought one pair of leggings, one pair of biker shorts, and two long, comfortable pairs of pants. I actually didn't wear the biker shorts at all, surprisingly. I mainly switched between the Nike shorts the leggings and the hiking zip off pants. But if you normally wear biker shorts, bring them. It is whatever is most comfortable to you. At night, having two pairs of long comfy pants to wear was super, super nice. I brought this one colorful pair just in case we went out to dinner at night. I had something a little bit nicer to wear other than just like backpacking clothes. Although I pretty much wore backpacking clothes to dinner every single night because I could not be bothered to dress up after walking so many miles. Then I brought three three buffs, two hats, and one pair of sunglasses. As far as the buffs, they were the most amazing and helpful pieces of clothing, I guess you could call them. You're gonna find a lot of fountains along the way on the Camino, some that are drinking water and some that are not, but either way, if it's a really hot day, take off the buff, dip it in the water, you can wipe your face with it, dunk it on your head, but then put it around your neck and it will keep your neck cool for probably around an hour to an hour and a half. And it is so helpful on those hot days when you just want to cool down. I definitely recommend bringing a poncho over a raincoat just because if you're wearing a raincoat with the backpack, even if you have a rain cover over your backpack, which I also recommend bringing, if it rains, you're still going to get the water between the raincoat and your backpack, which might soak the backpack through 
through, but if you get a big enough poncho, it will cover you and you can put it over your backpack so everything stays totally dry. We got rain ponchos for everyone in our group doing the Camino, but my friend Lucas decided that he didn't need his, so he left it in Spain at my grandma's house and it ended up raining about five days of the Camino. Um, and all he had was his rain jacket. Lucas, where's your raincoat? Where's your raincoat? <laughs> Lucas said, I don't need a raincoat. You <laughs> Such an L, bro. I left it because I didn't think I'd need it. I'm so bad! <laughs> I definitely recommend, and I think Lucas would also definitely recommend for you to bring a rain poncho. Definitely bring an adapter. I use this one. I absolutely love it. I've used it for almost two years now. I'll have it linked down below. I love that there's a lot of like opportunities to plug more stuff into it. There are two crucial things that you must have for the Camino de Santiago. Number one, AirPods so you can listen to podcasts, books, all the things, music, of course. But one of the most important things that I recommend so much is a wearable device that counts your steps. I cannot even express to you how nice it is to know at the end of the day how many miles you walked, how many steps you took. And recently, Ultra Human sent me their new Ultra Human Ring Air. And guys, this thing is amazing. It looks like this. Hopefully that's in focus. Just like a normal ring but it tracks your heart rate, your sleep, recovery, steps, everything. It is fantastic. So when you open the Ultra Human app, it tells me how many calories I've burned, total steps that I've taken. Here it gives you your stress levels. Then they give you dynamic recovery, so your resting heart rate, skin temperature. Right now my resting heart rate is within range, but it could be worked on a little bit. So it's really cool that not only do they track all of your health data, but they also recommend to you what you could be doing better. So for example, right here they have how to improve resting heart rate from sleeping more to exercising. Here it tracks your sleep. So last night I was in bed for a total of 11 hours. It was fantastic. And I slept eight hours and 50 minutes, which was much needed because we've been nonstop. But my sleep efficiency and heart rate drop needs attention. And normally this is because I've eaten a meal too late at night, which I did last night. I was up pretty late. Something else I really love is once you wear the ring for I think around two weeks, they start to tell you what time to kind of limit your screen time, what time to wind down, down, what time you should be going to sleep and waking up for your optimal health, which I love because sometimes I feel like I lack self-discipline and I just need someone to like manage me and I feel like this app manages <laughs> what I need to be doing better. Here I have my heart rate, my skin temperature, and my cardio age, which is really cool. So I'm 22 years old, but my cardio age is actually 19, which is awesome. You can also set goals, track your workouts, and down here it gives you the ring battery. The ring stays charged for around three to four days, which is really good. It is is fully waterproof so you can swim with it, shower with it, do the dishes. But normally at night if I'm gonna shower or do the dishes I'll just put it on the charger really quick to charge it back to 100% which normally takes like 30 to 45 minutes if it's not fully dead. And something I love is that when you're ordering the ring they send you a sizing kit first so basically you just pick out your ring size and they recommend that you wear that for two-ish nights. And then once you've found the most comfortable size you can submit your size on the website and then they'll send you the actual ring. You can wear this ring on your point pointer, middle, or ring finger. I put it on my pointer finger. It's great. It also comes in a few different colors. These are the colors. It's so shiny and so I was worried that it was going to scratch, but honestly it's been three weeks and there's not a single scratch on this ring. So if you're interested in learning more about the Ultra Human ring or you want to buy one for yourself, I will leave the link down below. And Ultra Human was kind enough to send me a discount code for you. So if you use the link down below, it should automatically apply the discount code. If not, the code is TV10. I will have all the information down below. I've used an Apple Watch and a Fitbit before and this little device tracks so much more than those two and so far it is my favorite wearable device that tracks your steps and everything that I've ever had. This one's kind of gross but someone's got to tell you bring a nail clipper because if your toenails are any bit long on this Camino with your foot like pressing and smacking into your shoe all day long, it's not gonna be nice. So make sure you cut your toenails very, very short so they're not hitting in the front of the shoe. Also, definitely bring a microfiber towel. Unless you're staying in Airbnbs, you're probably not gonna be provided with a towel in hostels or albergues. They're always good to have, so just bring your own towel. I would also recommend bringing an eye mask and earplugs for any hostels or albergues because you never know if the people are gonna be loud or not or respectful 
level of you trying to sleep. We've had some good and also bad experiences, so I was very grateful to have earplugs and an eye mask. A few other things that I brought, which I'm sure are pretty self-explanatory, but I'm just gonna list them to remind you. Sunscreen, hairbrush, toothbrush, mascara, razor, contacts, triple antibiotic ointment, hair ties and a hair clip, pen, carabiner, first aid kit. I would bring tissues and wipes and maybe a plastic bag to put them in when you're done using them. There will be bathrooms along the way, but sometimes you will be in the middle of the woods and you'll have to pee and you're just gonna have to pop a squat in the wild. Or as our British friends say, a wild wee. So, um, yeah bring some tissues. A few other things that have absolutely saved us on the Camino were Tiger Balm, Vaseline, good shoes, hiking poles, and tape for toes and tape for knees. Tiger Balm is for sore or aching muscles. It comes in this little container thing and it absolutely saved us on the Camino. I had shoulder pain and neck pain from carrying the backpack and on day three of the Camino my ankles were absolutely killing me. When your body's not used to walking so much with so much weight on you, it definitely can take a toll, and day three was the hardest. Don't worry, I cannot. I think we're broken. <laughs> you guys, I literally have never taken, taken a sitting shower. I did today. After day three, I feel like our muscles were stretched out enough. I really could walk forever. It was more of like a mental challenge. The Tiger Balm helped so much. I just rubbed it on any part of my muscles that were sore. It just like released the tightness and was incredible. This is gonna sound weird, but hear me out. Every single day before we walked, I put Vaseline on my toes, in between my toes, under my toes, on my heel, and on the back of my heel where you would get a blister. Two weeks of walking like 20 miles a day, and I didn't get one single blister because of this Vaseline. It feels a little weird at first, but you want your toes to be a little bit slippery so that they're not chafing together. My friends in the beginning didn't use Vaseline and unfortunately got some pretty bad blisters and it was so painful for them and not fun. Along with that, you can also tape your toes. I know there's some specific like toe tape um, and blister tape that you can use. I personally didn't use any of it. I didn't need it, but I would recommend putting like a blister tape on any, they call it like a hot spot, any spot on your foot that starts to feel a little blistery, put the blister tape on or use the Vaseline just because as soon as you start getting a blister, you're kind of screwed. You just want to like catch it from the beginning. We also got some KT tape. Uh, my friend Lizzie and Florence both have some problems with their knees. It was very helpful for them. My knees hurt a few days into the Camino because they've never been used in such a way before. So I decided to use some KT tape as well. Because I don't have knee problems, I don't think that I needed the KT tape. I think mine was more just sore muscles and the KT tape ended up hurting my knees more because I don't think I needed it. So if you need it, use it. If you don't need it and your knees are kind of just sore, stretch them out, keep walking, you'll be good. Let's talk shoes. I wore a pair of sneakers by the brand Topos. The reason why I got these was because my mom walked part of the Camino last year wore topos and swore by them. They have a very large toe box, which is good because you don't want your feet to be very smushed in your shoe. You want to have a little bit of room for your toes to be a little separated maybe so they're not chafing again. With these shoes, I got no blisters. They were so wonderful. My brother wore Adidas Ultra Boosts and he also got no blisters and absolutely loved them. I will link the Topo shoes down below. I've been talking for so long, I feel like my voice is going out. Also, really quickly, some people brought a journal. I personally didn't, I didn't wanna have to carry it, but you can bring it if you want. Um, I just journaled on my phone and took a bunch of pictures and videos. Moving on to energy and kind of nutritional stuff. Electrolytes are gonna be your very best friend along with Bolt gummies. I'll put a picture of both of those things here. Again, everything is linked down below. These are so helpful and I'll explain why in a second, but you're also gonna to wanna to bring meal bars and protein bars. Um, I did also bring a pill box with like a multivitamin and Advil and then some homemade trail mix. So something I did for the Camino was I drank a bottle of water about this big, maybe a little bit bigger with a full packet of electrolytes before I even started walking. Because if you drink electrolytes first thing in the morning, it helps your body absorb the rest of the water that you drink throughout the day a lot better. Then throughout the day, if you feel like you need a little boost or some more electrolytes, these Bolt gummies are so wonderful. They're B12 and electrolytes. I would eat like two to three gummies at a time when I started to get a little 
little shaky, especially when it was really, really sunny and you're sweating and you're just in direct sun. Those were really, really, really helpful. Meal bars and protein bars, I would bring maybe five to 10 meal bars. Um, there are gonna be some mornings where getting breakfast is not super easy, or even if you have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, the kind of spaces between those meals. It's a lot of walking. You're gonna feel hungry. Most times you can stop at a grocery store, but sometimes you are gonna be in the middle of nowhere, so it is good to just have food on you at all times to keep giving yourself energy. It's almost like going on a road trip with a car. The car can do X amount of miles, but you have to keep filling it up with gas. This is exactly how I feel about the Camino. As long as you are eating and drinking, you can pretty much walk for forever. As far as water, you could bring a water bottle like a Hydro Flask, but again, everything you bring, you have to carry. I chose to go to the grocery store and buy a one liter plastic bottle um, to refill with water. There are a lot of different water refilling places along the way, along the Camino path. Some of them are drinking water, some of them aren't drinking water. I did drink from a few that weren't specifically like drinking water, but I also grew up part-time in Europe as a kid and in Spain, so I feel like my stomach's pretty used to maybe some of the bacteria there, but for example, our friend Lucas had never been to Europe before this and he did get sick on the Camino. I don't know if it's from the water or something else, but you never know. I have a few more random tips for you. One of them is download podcasts, books, and music. This is going to be so helpful for when you're walking for hours. Um, we listened to two audiobooks on the Camino. I like shared my AirPods to my friend Florence and Lizzie, so we listened to the same two audiobooks. And also, it's important to have a good motivating music playlist for when it gets really hard and you just need to push through. I actually have a Camino playlist that I made specifically for the Camino that I will link down below. It's on my Spotify, which kind of leads me into my next point. If you haven't seen the movie The Way, it is all about the Camino de Santiago and it is one of my favorite movies in the entire world. I would highly recommend watching it before the Camino and part of the soundtrack from that movie is in my playlist. Something that is so important is the proper recovery for your body, which involves stretching and sleep. There were some nights where I needed to take one to two Advil just to like kind of reset my body and calm down my muscles because they hurt so bad. I'd say after day three, my muscles were stretched out and I really felt like I could walk forever. At the end of the day, you do get sore, but then somehow the next morning you feel good again. Sleep is so important though. I noticed that the more I slept, the more my muscles would recover and the more I stretched, the more my muscles would recover. So prioritize sleep, prioritize stretching. And also along with that, I do just want to say that our bodies are so beyond incredible. You might think that you can't walk 20 miles a day or even more than that, but trust me, somehow you just do it. There was one day that was the hardest day of the Camino. I thought we were going to walk 14 miles and then my brother told me it was 17 miles and it ended up being almost 21. I unfortunately slept like three to four hours the night before because I was up till five in the morning waiting for our friend Lizzie and Lucas to come back from the hospital because he had food poisoning and he got an IV. Long story. I somehow managed to do this with a backpack on. It was that time of the month. It was such a hard day of the Camino. It was mostly up a mountain for like 17 miles and then like the last two to three miles were downhill. We literally started like over here and walked all the way up this mountain. Oh, I cry. <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence. <laughs> we're almost there. We're five minutes. Help! Oh, I can't go on. I don't recommend four hours of sleep with that much mileage. <laughs> I can't get up. <laughs> I was so tired. I was literally broken. And then somehow I took a shower and then walked more after to go to dinner. Went to sleep that night, woke up the next morning. It was completely fine to walk again. Our bodies are incredible. We are almost through this list. We are getting to the end, but some of the most important advice I have for you is coming up. It was raining for around five to six days of the Camino. So something that we did that was my friend Florence's idea. We actually also did this in Taiwan in the beginning of this year. We didn't want our feet to get wet. So we took plastic bags and put our feet in those plastic bags, tied them, and then put our feet into the shoe. 
This kept our feet dry the entire day, which was so nice because you don't want to walk like between 15 and 20 miles with wet feet and wet socks. So that was a life hack that saved us on those days. Another one is hiking poles. Some people don't use hiking poles. I've never used them before until the Camino. My mom recommended that we get hiking poles and use them and praise God because these saved me so much. These are the ones that I use. Again, everything's down below linked. They're so helpful for going uphill because it kind of like helps you pull yourself uphill, especially when you're carrying a heavy backpack. But also going downhill, it helps you to not slip. There are some slippery areas, especially when it's raining. Just makes you more short, sure footed. <laughs> Also, it takes some weight off of your knees and feet. I don't think I would have been able to do the Camino without the hiking poles, given that I didn't train really before doing it. As far as food, we were staying in Airbnbs for the majority of the time, so we were getting like groceries at nighttime, making eggs in the morning with toast. But one of my favorite snacks for the Camino was getting laughing cow cheese and eating it with like peppers or putting it on bread with some type of meat, so like ham, pepperoni, salami, turkey, anything like that. Some of the food combinations weren't like the most ideal combinations, but it gave us good protein and energy. At this point, you're like eating to survive. Also, do not underestimate how good food is gonna taste when you burn like 5,000 calories in one day. It's insane. Make sure you have a Camino passport. I'm sure you've heard about this. You can get it the day before you start your Camino from wherever you're starting it from. But I also met two girls along the way on the Camino that got theirs, I think on like Amazon or something. And it was a longer one. You can get a longer passport if you're going like from France to Spain since it's a longer trek. Ours was a little bit shorter, but you need to get two stamps at least per day on the Camino. So you stop along the way and get those stamps. I look at my stamp book now and it's like, whoa, like how did we actually do this? It's just so cool. And something else that maybe some people would consider cheating, I don't because I feel like everyone makes their own Camino and you do whatever you need to do to reach the end of the Camino. But it is sending your bags forward to your next location. So for example, if you pack all of your stuff in one of these and you do not want to carry the weight, take out of this bag what you want to carry with you for the day, put it in a smaller backpack. I got a smaller little backpack for three euros at Decathlon. It was amazing. I think it's like five to seven euros or something per day that you can send this forward. It's basically a taxi service that will take your bags to your next location. If you want to prove to yourself that you can carry all of your stuff on your back and walk, more power to you. Great job. I did that the first day of the Camino and it was so difficult. And also given that my friend Florence had some problems with her knees, she and I decided to put all of our heavy stuff in her backpack and all the lighter stuff in this one. Um, along with food and water and all of that. And so we switched off carrying one bag for the rest of the Camino and just sent her bag forward. I would carry the bag for two hours and she would carry the bag for two hours and it just gives you a good break. But along with this, we also had the smaller backpack full of a few other things. So we were both always carrying something. If you want, start the Camino carrying your bag. But if there's any point that you get to where you feel like you just cannot carry that weight anymore, it is not cheating, it is not failing. You are taking care of your body and you are doing what you need to do to stay healthy and not damage your knees or your back or your shoulders or anything. As long as you are enjoying the journey and getting the most out of it, it doesn't matter if you are carrying a very heavy bag or not. So I just wanna put that out there. There are different taxi services that will do that for you. Oh, you know, backpack that little. No, it's not a car, but I'll talk. Hey, Tesla storm service. I'm out of them. Show them this one's a 50 in a box. <laughs> A few of my last pieces of advice just to wrap up this video is number one, find your why. Why are you doing the Camino? Maybe you already know what your why is or maybe you don't. For me personally, it wasn't anything super deep. It was just to get in shape and to prove to myself that my body could do something like this. Honestly, it's just something I've always wanted to do. It's been on my bucket list for years and that was my why. Everyone walks the Camino for a different reason and that's what makes it so special. And that is why I recommend 
so much for you to watch the movie The Way because everyone has a different why. Maybe somebody was diagnosed with cancer, maybe someone survived cancer, maybe someone just suffered a loss or they want to get in better shape. Whatever that is, people have their own reason for why they're walking. And the experience of ending up in Santiago and seeing people get emotional or fall to their knees or pray, like it is so beautiful. And remember that everyone gets to create their own Camino. So if you're in a group full of people, walk at your own pace, stop when you want to stop, and just maybe create like a meeting point so you guys are all still kind of walking together but also doing your own thing and just enjoy the journey. I also really recommend walking alone because you meet a lot of people when you do that. We mostly stayed in Airbnbs, but the albergues and the hostels are so much fun. Albergues are very similar to hostels, but they run more on donations. I do think there's a minimum amount of $5 per night, but this is just a place where you're gonna get to know so many people. We stayed at two albergues along the way and we wish that we did them pretty much the whole time. It was nice some nights to have an Airbnb, but oh my gosh, what an experience. It was so cool because one night we watched the sunset with all the other pilgrims, got to know them, got to know why they were walking, and it was really, really special. And to wrap all this up, here's my Camino shell that was on my backpack for the entire time. It's such a good reminder of what that experience was like. If I could sum up this entire experience in a quote, I would say it's not about the destination, but about the journey, which I know sounds so cliche. When we got to Santiago, I was expecting like this grand experience, I guess, and it was more just like humble and a little emotional, of course. I think it's portrayed in the movie The Way. It's like this really grand experience. And when we got there, we were kind of just like, oh, like cool, we made it. But when you look at the journey of what we pushed through and people we met and things we got to experience, it was truly, truly life-changing. And I would do it all over again in a heartbeat. I desperately want to do another Camino, whether it's the two-week one again next year or the full one from France to Spain that takes between 30 and 50 days. There's different routes for the Portuguese Camino. So we started on the littoral slash like coastal route for the first day. And then on the second day, we cut over to the central route. And then a few days after that, we did the spiritual route. So we wanted to hit all three. And I will say that the spiritual route was the most beautiful and most difficult. The nature on the spiritual route was unlike anything I have ever seen. It was so beautiful and we were literally just walking through European villages all day, meeting people. The views of everything were just insane. So research the different routes, but I love the way we did it because we got to experience all three and it was incredible. And that brings us to the end of this video. I know that was so much information, but I feel like it's all necessary to know. This is literally everything you need to know for the Camino and things that I wish I knew going into it as well. I'm so excited for you to do this Camino and if you're just watching this for fun and you're thinking of doing the Camino or if you've never even heard of the Camino before watching this video, maybe you should look into it. It was so life-changing and I just feel like everyone that should experience it and it is so doable. Like there were 70 year olds walking the Camino faster than I was, mind you. It's incredible. It is absolutely incredible. I also filmed every single day on the Camino, like iPhone videos that I haven't posted yet, but I plan to post soon on my Instagram. I like vlogged the daily experiences. So I'll have my Instagram down below as well if you wanna go check that out. This video should be coming soon. That is pretty much it. Thank you for watching and I will see all of you beautiful people in my next video. Buen camino.